Stephen to death proves to be a turning point. A respected deacon, he is stoned to death for his belief in Jesus. This event ignites a firestorm of persecution. You are the apostles. Pray, use your community, use your growing faith to guide the church on your mission to spread the good news. You have been commissioned. Hey guys, Richard here with Board Game Paradise, and today I'm going to teach you Commission. I'm excited to bring this game to you because it's going to hit Kickstarter June 2015, and if you're on the Kickstarter page, you're awesome. If not, check out the description. There's a link, and check it out. It's going to be a great game. I'm excited about it. It's a ton of fun, and it's a game of biblical proportion. So let's run through the components real quick. We have a few different things. So you have the scenario cards, and there's uh, a handful of them, depending on, I think Kickstarter's going to uh, unlock a few of them as well. You have the player boards, you have the apostle pawns, you have apostle-specific cards, then you have the church members, you have growth stops and mission stops, and we'll talk more about those a little bit. You have the trial cards, and then you have faith cards, as well as the message die, and the converted city leader token. And again, so we're going to break into those a little bit more. But let's look, how, let's look at how to set up a game real quick. The way that's going to work, first thing you want to do is choose your scenario. So if it's your first time playing, start with the Acts of the Apostle. So each scenario card is going to have a setup, it's going to have special rules if there are any that apply. You're going to have victory conditions, and then you have the historical value if you fail. So be careful because the church is in your hands. But let's look at, and you also have a little blurb on the back as well. Um, it gives you some of the significance of relevance, which is really cool. So select your scenario, and then you have to build your trial deck. And this is where you can choose your difficulty. There's going to be three different cards, and James, in the first chapter, so James chapter 1, he tells you to rejoice in trials and tribulations. Well, you won't be rejoicing as you're playing through these cards. So you have the discipleship, and you have the martyr difficulty. And so all the blue cards you'll stick in if you want to disciple and you'll discard the martyr ones, the ones that just have the martyr tokens and if you want to be, play the higher difficulty, the martyr difficulty you'll discard the disciple ones throw those back in the box and that's how you'll create and stack your deck once you've done that you should have 21 cards you place them there and make sure you have your faith cards up top and you're ready to play so let's jump into gameplay and see what the different faces are you have arm you have live, and you have mature. So arm is pretty simple. You each have a deck of eight cards. So during setup, don't forget to grab two extra cards and stick them in each player's start deck. What you're gonna do is shuffle those up, and then during the arm, you're gonna draw six of those. So you should have two left. Now this is gonna be your starting hand. And during the prey phase, we're gonna be taking those and setting them down. So once you have your six, that's your arm, so next is Trials. Out of the Live phase, there's going to be five different parts. There's going to be Trials, there's going to be Pray, we're going to Share, Move, and then Grow. So looking at Trials, the first thing that's going to happen during the Live phase is we flip over a new card and we do whatever that says. And so in this case, we're actually have to lose a church member or a missionary and the trials always happen wherever the apostle who has the elder token is. And the way you choose who starts the game is just by, uh, just by choosing. Since it's a cooperative game, you can actually just choose who you'd like to start. So in this case, we would lose a missionary or lose a, a church member. And then we go into praying. So right after trials and tribulations, the church always comes together and prays vigilantly. So we pray. Now this is secretly and quietly, but each player... If you're playing a two to three player game, chooses one card, and in a four to six player game, you choose two cards. So, choose your two cards, you set them down, face down. Once each apostle and each player has chosen their cards, we then, the elder, rolls the message die. Now on a four through eight, nothing happens, but on a three, the messages are lost. And unfortunately, nobody can communicate with the elder when he's choosing what cards to play. With a Two, the messages are actually intercepted, and the elder will have to roll again. On a one through four, you'll have to put a mission stop where the elder is, and on a five through six, you'll put a growth stop where the elder is. And so typically during a turn, 
everything that happens will happen where the elder ha where the elder is, or the card will specifically say something different. So, assuming we can communicate, flip over your share cards, and then the elder gets to choose which two cards to use out of those cards that are shared. Once he's done the effects of both those cards, you then go into moving, and there's three different types of moving. So you can do a fellowship move. What that is is when you're moving into an area where there's already church members, or you can do a mission move, which is where you move into an, a new area that doesn't have any church members. In order to do a mission move, you actually have, have to have at least four church members in the originating area, and you can move any number of people you would like to into the new territory, but the rule is you have to at least have four to go into a new territory or make a mission move. Now, if you already have a couple guys in the areas, then you can do fellowship moves without having the extra or the fourth rule or anything like that, a four play rule. And then the last one is the ship move. So many areas, in order to get to an island, you'll have a ship. And if there's a ship displayed there, you accept to move to the ship before you can move to the island. So it's kind of an extra move. And so be careful there. Moving into a ship, you don't have to have any certain number of players, or and it doesn't count as a mission move. Um, so you can do that freely as you'd like. So once during the move step, you're going to get two moves. And the elder, again, will get to do that. Um, and if you're allowed to talk and you haven't rolled a 1, 2, or 3 on the message you got, then other players and other apostles can throw in as they want to with feedback and tips. And then the last step is growing. So any church that has at least three members will get to grow. So a church is where there's at least one pawn missionary or church member. And as long as there's at least three of them, during the growth step, you can actually add an extra church member to that area. Once you've gone through that other phase, you'll pass the elder token to the next player, and that player will do it again. With two or three players, the live phase will happen twice. With four to five, it'll happen three times. And with six players, you'll actually do it four times. And an easy way to keep track of that is once you're down to two cards, that's when you'll do the mature phase. So, the mature phase is the last part of this, and this is the deck building part, which is kind of fun. In the upper left hand corner of each of the faith cards, there's a, a feat with a number. That is how much you have in order to purchase new cards and add them to your deck. So with that, right now I have one and one, so I have two. So I can purchase two of the ones, or I can purchase one of the twos. If I purchase two of the ones, I'll just grab the top two and stick them in my deck. If I draw, if I purchase only one, two, then I actually get to look at the top two cards, pick which one I want, add that to my deck, and take the other one and stick it at the bottom. That's a great way to get some really cool, powerful cards, especially when you're up at the four level. You can look at the top two, pick which one you want, and stack your deck with it. And that's what gameplay looks like. All right, so the game ends three different ways. A, once you've actually achieved the victory, B, when we've run out of the trial cards, or C, when five churches have been extinguished. So the second two are both ways to lose, and the only way to win is obviously by choosing the, by achieving the victory condition before we run out of cards or five churches are extinguished. So let's take a look at an example turn and what that would look like. So. I'm gonna, I've set up for three players, and I'm going to run you through that real quick. So the first thing we do is each apostle would arm themselves with faith, and so you're going to draw up to six cards. Once you have your six cards, we then go through the trial phase. And so flipping over the first card, oh no, we have Mount Vesuvius erupts. So what happens is the largest two churches on the board are extinguished. And when we have to remove converted city leaders if they are there. So the largest two, this one has three, four, five. This one has uh, four, five as well. This one has four. So those are our two biggest ones. So all, everything except the apostles are removed from the board completely. And then because there's nobody there, we actually get an extinguished. Now, if we fill up all five of the extinguished tokens, we lose. 
So, and then with this one, he actually has to move and he can move anywhere he'd like and because that one is empty as well. Anytime you get Mount Vesuvius erupts, you actually get two extinguished tokens. So that trial happens. So now the church gets together and starts praying. And so every player will take two of their cards and put them on their board because we're playing with three players. There'll be a chart on the back of the rules that tell you what to do or how many cards to place with the number of players. So every apostle will play. Then we roll a message die. I roll a five, so I'm okay. And on the back again, the three, two, and one will show you what happens when those happens. Just refer to the charts. And so since we communicate, everybody flips over their cards. And then since I'm the elder, I get to choose two out of these six cards since we're playing with three players. And I'm gonna choose an extra growth. And that'll happen immediately, and that'll happen exactly where I am. So that'll happen there. And then I'll choose to play one of these New Testament books. So I have at John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and Revelation to the New Testament. So I will put that right there, underneath the board there. And then we move to the move step. So now that we've shared news those cards, we have the move step. So what I can do is move up to two churches. So to make a missionary move, I have to have up to four. And so I'll go ahead and move those up to Crete. And since it's a ship, it's okay that I'll leave it empty. And that doesn't add an extinguished token. And then for my second move, I'm going to try to get some of these guys over to help my other guys. So I'm going to move them, along with the Apostle, down there. So that's my two moves. So now that I have my two moves, the last thing is the grow. And any church that has at least three members, I can add a new member to. So I'll add one to that one, and add one to that one. And then I pass the Elder token, next player goes through those steps again. Now with three players, we'll go through the lift phase twice, and then at the end of that, we'll have two cards left. Once we have two cards, we'll go through the Mature step. And so I have two again, so I'll discard the two cards, and I'm going to draw from the two. So because I'm only purchasing one card, I get to look at the top two, choose one of them, add it to my discard pile, and put the other one at the bottom of my deck. Once you've done the mature step, you go back to arming and drawing up to six cards, and then you do it all again. So, be careful. These trial cards are dangerous, and the Roman Empire is after the church. But with good, capable hands, we can win. Good luck. It's as simple as that. Thanks for joining us in Paradise. Until next time, game on. Hey guys, Richard here with Board Game Paradise. You were gonna tell me you're starting? Make it click a bully!